So if I were to ask you to paint this still life here, you'd probably look at the outside of this pineapple and be intimidated to paint it. Like, oh, like, where do I start? There's so many details and different colors. You know, I don't know what to do. Or you'd look at this top part and be like, oh, there's so many shapes. Do I draw out every single leaf at the top here and, and fill it in? What about the ones that are going back into the dark? Or you look at the light effect happening on the inside of the pineapple and you think like, oh, how am I gonna do that? Like, how am I gonna make it look like it's actually lit up? Well, there's actually three rules that I always think about when I'm painting that helps me tackle problems like these. And these three rules are big to small, dark to light, and thin to thick. So let's walk through this and I'm gonna show you how I use these as I go through a painting. All right, before we go any further, if you have any questions about oil painting, please leave those questions in the comments below. I love seeing them. That's how I come up with ideas to make these videos. I always like to try and answer as many questions in the comments as I can in the first hour of uploading a video. So make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified when I release a new video so you can ask a question and hopefully get it answered. All right, back to the pina colada painting. So the first thing I do is I put in this dark background. Now this is working dark to light. Always know that with oil paint, it's a lot easier to lighten paint as you go opposed to darkening it. And also, if you think about it, a lot of the time the darks are going to be the things that are the deepest into the subject, the areas that aren't getting the most light. And so it kind of makes sense to put those in first and then stack on top of them the lighter and lighter values just like the object is in real life. This is why a lot of landscape painters will get the darkest darks of trees in first because those darkest darks are the parts that are furthest into the tree. And the lightest parts of that tree are the parts that are the furthest outside, catching the most sunlight. And also getting the darkest darks in first will help you gauge values as you go. You know, values are how light or dark a color is. So if you think about it, when you get that darkest dark in, you've already established one end of the value scale and you know that all of the other values are going to be lighter to some degree than that darkest dark. So dark to light, now this is also working thin to thick. I'm doing this at the same time. This paint is thin, not transparent though. I'm using just paint and paint thinner to lay this in because I know there's gonna be areas where we're gonna have to build on top of this. So I don't want the paint to be too thick. You, know, you can see there's even an area in the top of this pineapple where I'm painting this black background all the way in covering up where some of the, I guess you call them leaves of the pineapple would be because I want to establish that dark background and then I'm gonna come over top of that with the leaves of the pineapple. Now this is kind of like a judgment thing that you will get better at with practice. Like so much of oil painting is knowing when to paint around something and when to paint over something. But I'm looking at the photo reference and I'm seeing, all right, these leaves that are in shadow, they're dark enough that I know I will be able to paint over this dark paint and establish them well. I couldn't say that for the light side of the pineapple leaves. That's why I leave a space open for that because I don't wanna to have to be fighting that dark paint underneath. All right, quick demo time. I know a lot of people struggle with understanding paint thickness and medium and paint thinner and all that. So I'm just gonna demonstrate that real quick here. So right here is my paint thinner. This is my medium. I use the Gamblin solvent-free gel. I like using the Gamblin solvent-free gel because you know, I feel like it's really simple. It's easy to find, so all my students can find it for my tutorials, which I use this in pretty much all of my tutorials. It does speed up the dry time a little bit, but it's not like something I'm planning on or using it because it speeds up the dry time. So let's say that we're going to paint like a red ball. So I'm just gonna get some paint, paint thinner. I'm just gonna make kind of like a dark red here. All right, so this is just paint and paint thinner. It's gonna draw a circle. So if I was like painting a red ball, this is a very simple example. Starting out, thin dark paint. You see, it's not transparent, but it's still pretty thin. So now as I get to the lighter parts of the ball, I'm going to thicken up the paint. So I have this color, I'm gonna thicken it, I'm gonna lighten it. So let's just add a little bit of white. And you see I'm like branching off from this first pile. I do that a lot. I feel like it helps me one with just shifting colors, shifting values, because I know where I started. Also kind of keeps me on track with like the paint thickness. Like I, I can feel like this paint here is a little thicker. So I got that and let's just say, this is the lighter side as we go, like the lightest part's gonna be right there. So let's just do this. Now let's go even lighter. Some red, some white. Now, right now with just this red and white, it's thick, but like it's tugging a little bit. Like it's it's not flowing as much as I want it to at this stage. 
So instead of adding paint thinner, and because I, I want to keep this, I still want to keep the vibrance of the color, I'm going to add just a little bit of my medium here. Just a little bit. Now the paint's flowing. It's still going to have a certain level of thickness to it. And also when you use the medium instead of paint thinner, it's not going to like knock back the color at all. So it's still thicker paint. I actually probably go a little lighter. But with the medium, it's still going to flow. So I can still, you know, cover a good amount of ground without, without having to like constantly like load back up my brush. So got a little light section. But now as I move even thicker, I'm going to start using less medium. So if you kind of think of like paint thinner on one end of the spectrum and straight paint on the other, like paint with medium is kind of in the middle. Now don't get this confused with fat over lean. Fat over lean is like a whole different process when you're painting on top of like already dried layers and it prevents it cracking. But when you're painting a la prima like this where everything's wet, you don't have to worry about fat over lean. You just have to worry about thin to thick. And some people get confused like, oh, Chris, isn't the paint with the medium thicker? It's like, no, it's not. Because you can see like this has medium in it. Like you see it's, you know, how much it flows. But if I add more paint to it, like this is thicker. Like if you think about it, a lot of times the thickest paint on a painting are at the very end when the painter's using a palette knife to lay it down because it's so thick. So if I go even lighter and thicker with this and not worrying about using medium, it's so thick that watch how I lay it down. Like again, this is why I always suggest using good like oil painting brushes, like thick sturdy bristles that can hold enough paint. Like I'm really loading up a good amount of paint here. And uh, this is actually a brush from my brush set uh, from Rosemary Co. I have a beginner's brush set. Uh, link to that is in the description below. So good enough. And now I'm like kind of like laying the paint on. I'm trying to like lay it off my brush onto the canvas. If I want to go even more, it's kind of like a lot of straight white here. It's like the littlest. Boom. Right there. Now, if you need to, sometimes you have to like go back in and put in darks like even darker darks, like if I need to like go in here, it's okay if that's still a little thicker, a little darkest shadow. Oh, look at me putting a little cast shadow. So hopefully that helps you with dark to light and thin to thick in terms of actually controlling the paint. All right, so if you're watching this video and you're thinking, oh, Chris, this is all great and good and everything, but I struggle with mixing color. Well, I'm actually not going to get into color mixing in this video because I offer the color mixing video from my Foundations of Oil Painting course for free. If you want to check that out, there's a link to it in the description of this video. So now I move on to constructing the form of the pineapple first. I'm not worrying about details. This is working big to small. I want to establish that base spherical form of the pineapple before I start adding in things to indicate texture. You know, I want to establish the big shapes first. That's why this version of the photo I'm using is blurred because I don't want to get caught into detail too soon. And also I'm working thin to thick. As I'm blocking out the spherical form, the paint is relatively thin with just paint thinner. So once I have that spherical form figured out, again, I go dark to light and I start drawing out the darkest shapes in the texture of this pineapple. Now, I don't take it to full completion because I want to build the painting as a whole. I don't want one area to get too developed. That's how you're gonna get lost. This could also fall under working big to small. You wanna get all the big shapes of the whole painting in first before putting in a ton of small shapes. Now, staying with that idea of working big to small, I do the same thing on the inside of the pineapple. I see a lot of different variations and shapes and values inside that pineapple, but I'm not worrying about that right now. I really wanna break it down into just two colors or values, light and dark, and I want to get those established first. I want this light effect to be working with just two colors. I know if I can do that, there'll be time later on in the painting to come back in and finesse in smaller shapes and subtle value shifts within these two light and shadow families. Now, even when I go to the light part of the pineapple that's getting hit with light, I still work dark to light. I go with the darkest light that I can because I wanna leave room to build lighter values on top of that if I want to. Now, going up to the leaves of the pineapple, I don't go in and try and paint individual leaves right away. I'm still trying to block it out into its big shapes. This is why I always suggest when painting, squint in your eyes when you look at your subject and see 
what shapes condense together into big shapes and get those first. Again, big to small. Now, if you're having trouble kind of understanding this big to small aspect of this, I've actually made a video where I did an exercise where I painted a landscape with just big flat shapes and then progressively got smaller with those shapes, kind of like stacking them on top of each other as if they were cut out paper. And it's just a good visual and a good kind of in-depth explanation of this big to small idea. If you want to check that out, I'll put a link to it above right now. And now since I've established that dark background, I can pull leaves out from that dark background. And since all this paint is wet, it's easy to get soft edges, which is what I want. You know, anytime you lose something into shadows, look to have soft edges. Being able to have a variety of edges and knowing when to have a soft edge or a hard edge, I feel like is what really separates good painters from great painters. Like if you look at a lot of John Singer Sargent's portraits, he's not afraid to completely lose edges in the shadows. And a good way to do that is to be able to work wet into wet paint. I know a lot of people when they first start oils, that's like the number one thing that they're afraid of. It's like, oh, it's all wet and I can't control it. Well, if you work thin to thick, you're gonna have more control. If you work dark to light, you're gonna have more control. But you want to be able when you want to, to kind of lose control of that paint and let it blend together. I know it sounds scary, but once you get the hang of it, you're gonna like look back at watercolors and acrylics and think that those are harder <laughs> because you don't have this option as much in those. Again, when I go to the light side of these leaves, I block it in with a big shape of the darkest light that I can, and then I progressively try and find smaller, lighter shapes with thicker paint. Also, if you're somebody that is trying to work looser or paint simpler and you find that you're constantly just getting into too much detail or outlining or your paintings just aren't as expressive as you want, like this kind of stuff is gonna help a lot. This is actually the second time I've painted this still life. And the first time, one of the main things I didn't like so much about my painting was that this top part, it just seemed too detailed. It seemed too rigid, too in focus, and I just wasn't a huge fan of it. So I wanted to make sure when I painted this one that I was more loose with it, more suggestive. And starting with big shapes and working to smaller shapes helps that a lot because you can stop whenever you want. You can be like, all right, that's enough shapes. Like it's reading enough. I don't need any more shapes. Now this coconut is a great example of working big to small. I pretty much paint the whole coconut with just two colors, a light, and a dark. I'll come back later and find smaller shapes and more subtle shifts in value, but knowing that I can establish this and get it to work and read, which is two colors, is where I want to be right now. Now it's time to put up the unfiltered photo and go in and find smaller shapes where the paint is going to get thicker and lighter, yes. Now on the inside of this pineapple, I'm going lighter with the paint, I'm also going thicker, but I'm also paying attention to my brushwork because I want to help indicate the fibers inside of the pineapple here. You know, the direction of your brushwork is a great way to indicate texture or surface of something without getting out like a super small brush and actually trying to paint like a bunch of little details. Now, yes, you wanna work dark to light the best you can. This doesn't mean that you can't go back and put in some darks. So that's what I'm doing here. You know, you're gonna have to bounce back and forth from dark to light, you know? It's kind of like a dance. It's kind of like a dance. Now, for these small light shapes at the top of the pineapple here, I'm making sure that I'm loading my brush with enough paint that I can make these very clean, simple marks. You know, when you get towards the end of your painting, when you're laying in this thicker, lighter paint, it's best to think of it like you're laying down a sticker and hopes to lay down a brush stroke and then leave it there. You know, this is gonna add confidence to your painting. You know, you want it to look like you were so confident, you're like, yes, I want that stroke right there. Perfect, exactly where I wanted it. This was a super fun painting to do. If you'd like to do it along with me, you can find the full tutorial on my Patreon page, which is linked in the description below. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting.